Welcome. Thanks for everyone coming here. I hope everyone's having an awesome day. There's beautiful, amazing weather in Portland if you're visiting from out of town. So, for, yeah, it's always like this all the time. So send all your venture capital here. Invest in us. It's awesome here. It's perfect. All right. So I very uh, subversively named this talk, Clone to Get Together Into Your Town. And it's, it's about how I started the local Git user group, PDX Git, and just maybe how you can use some of the same techniques or you know, maybe you already have this idea, I'm sure a lot of people do, and you just haven't gotten off the ground or something like that. So maybe some of these things will, will help you. Um, and the person who made that awesome logo up there is sitting somewhere. He's sitting right there. It's Bart right there. So thanks, Bart. All right. So. Oh. Sweet. Are you in, where are you? Are you like, haha, <laughs> cool, awesome. Yeah, we are, you know, it's a sister state. So yeah, if you open, if you start a user, a Git user group anywhere in Oregon, I will come and talk at it. As that is my threat or my promise, whatever you consider that. All right. Um, and our little, our little slogan is uh, the monthly user group that doesn't lose your data. And one of our, one of our fun users came up with that. Um, PDXGit.com, you can see stuff and things. And here's our little um, it's hard to see there, but it is a blob eating trees, and it is an awesome little nerdy reference there. All right, so a little bit about infrastructure. Uh, we have a cat staring at us in a tube for those that can't see the screen. And um, so infrastructure, GitHub pages is definitely a core thing, and that just makes it dead simple to update a web page and and give a bunch of people access to update a web page and then also just keep track of that of that site you know inversion control and then as soon as you update it github just updates the website so you, there's no like uploading ftp images or any of that annoying stuff from the 90s that i used to do so yeah github pages is amazing for many things and uh, if you're running a user group then a website for the user group uh, github pages is perfect for that um, Twitter Bootstrap is really cool. Um, has anyone in here used Twitter Bootstrap before or heard of it? Or, you know, it's a few people. Sweet. Um, Twitter Bootstrap is really cool because it is what Twitter uses to have everything they do be mobile friendly by default. And, and mobile friendly is also called responsive design now. There's all these fancy words. But um, Twitter Bootstrap is really awesome if you're starting fresh on a new website. Um, it gives you a really awesome infrastructure to build things very quickly that work on all tablet sizes, all mobile sizes, all desktop sizes. There's none of this like, oh, if you're on a 960 by whatever thing, then do this. And, and none of that. It's all fluid layout. It works all over the place. So um, this gets us working on like tablets and mobile devices and you know the, the website that's controlled by github pages and so this makes it responsive and mobile friendly all that stuff um, font awesome is if you couldn't tell really awesome um, it's a font that that github uses if you guys have noticed github has all these icons now instead of images on the web page um, and that's actually called an iconic font it's it's actually a font that has images in it so that you can scale those images arbitrarily in the browser and you're not you know sending images over the wire all the time so it's way more efficient it looks way better because you can scale it arbitrarily and, and things like that so um, we use that for our website as well and it's just I'll show you the website you know it's little cool icons and, and things like that um, Google Groups it's if it's infrastructure. It's not the perfect thing. It's not the best thing. Some people hate it. Some people love it. But it's free, and it's a mailing list, and it gives you the the ability to you know allow people to kind of filter it and admin it if you want. And if you have a better user mailing list kind of setup, please let me know. That's just kind of dead simple. But you know, Google Groups is probably good infrastructure for your group if you're starting. Um, Caligator is an awesome local tech calendar that we have uh, and it's also open source so you can run your own tech calendar with this so with the software that runs this but uh, we use Calgator to basically make sure everyone in the Portland tech community knows about our meetings and and things like that so if you're running it in your own town you want to make sure that you know whatever the equivalent is maybe there's some meetup.com or there's 
you know, there's some list of local tech events, you want to make sure people know about your group and, you know, have some infrastructure for that. Um, we have a Twitter account, and that's just, you know, people can follow updates about the group, or, you know, we send out some tweets when there's going to be a meeting so that people can be lazy and just kind of look at Twitter and be like, oh, yeah, there's a meeting today. I don't know how to use a calendar, but I looked at Twitter and, you know. <laughs> and we have a LinkedIn group. It hasn't been used much. I just kind of created it as an experiment, like, okay, maybe people want to do stuff on LinkedIn with regard to PDX Git, so I created it. I'm not sure there's been much um, activity. I haven't done much on it. Um, I have a little bit of history, just because, I don't know, I think it's, it's interesting. Um, there's actually something called the Git Together, and that is the... Git Core Developer Conference, and I went to that in 2010, and it was because it was just after this conference. They kind of, they sandwiched it just after the Google Summer of Code conference, so I went to that kind of on accident. It was just like, oh, I'm already here. I should kind of hang out with the smartest Git people in the world and just rub shoulders with them. Maybe I'll learn something, you know, and it was amazing. I met the maintainers of Git and the smartest people in the world with Git, and I just kind of stood near them, and it was awesome. Um, and then that happened two years in a row, basically. It's like, this is get-together thing. It's just once a year. It's this conference at Google. All kinds of cool stuff happens. And then um, I was like, this should just be a meeting. Like, every town should have one of these. Like, there's a lot of people using Git. You know, it crosses language boundaries. There's no, there's no one technology in Git. There's people coding in Ruby and JavaScript and PHP and assembly and C and making websites and doing crazy embedded electronics, and Git is needed to keep track of stuff in all those areas. So it cuts through all the different communities, and so there's, there's a lot of interesting, cool you know, cross-pollination of ideas in Git because it, it crosses so many boundaries of you know, niches and circles and things like that. So um, I created, I registered pdxgit.com January 26th of last year. I looked that up. Um, the first meeting was February 1st, and it wasn't really a, a, a regular thing. I kind of just was like, let's have this thing, let's see if people show up, and then we'll figure it out. So the first meeting, I think like 30, something like 30 people showed up, and I was like, okay, people are like interested in this. You know, there's some people here. That's just in Portland on a winter day, <laughs> you know, in the, in the middle of winter, 30 people showed up to a Git meeting. So I was like, okay, this is pretty cool, like people are interested in Git. Um, and, you know, life got busy, crazy things happened. I bought a house and got married in between here. So, yeah, the second meeting was, you know, four months later. <laughs> um, and that was in August. And that was an awesome meeting. That was at Puppet Labs. Uh, the first one was at Collective Agency. The second one was at Puppet Labs. And Egal was there giving, he gave an amazing, awesome talk about all the different GUIs he used for doing... Uh, just reviewing patches and dealing with merge conflicts and stuff. So Egal was there helping me, kind of making sure I turned this into a real meeting that met every month and all that stuff. So this is just kind of, kind of the archaic history now, stuff that happened you know, last year, two years ago. Um, any questions about that stuff? Because I, you know, I drink a lot of coffee and sometimes I talk fast. So. But this is, you know, this is just history. I mean, whatever. What do you got? No, I'm good. Thank you, though. You're giving me stuff. What? What is it? Thank you, though, but I don't want any more technology to get in between me and my technology. <laughs> um, so recent, tech, recent history is that we have regular monthly meetings now thanks to Elemental Technologies. So thank you to Elemental for giving us a venue. And we start a meeting in March regularly, and then what we do is we just meet the last Wednesday of the month. So it's just kind of regular, and the next meeting is on the 26th of this month. So if you're still, if you're local, please come, and if you're still in town visiting, then, you know, it's very close. Um, here's probably the most important thing about cloning a get-together into a town is how do you get lots of free stuff? Because running a user group isn't free takes time, energy, venue, food, motivation. So you got to get free stuff from people. Um, and number one important thing is a place to meet, a venue. So that's really important. Um, people, 
really want to hire people like us that use Git. I don't know, this thing's kind of pissing me off. Can you guys hear me without this thing? Or are we not going to be recorded? All right, I'm going to have to hold it. It's cool, I'm just going to hold it. So, yeah, talking to local companies that, that want you to be there and, you know, there's places that just want awesome developers to be near their office so that they get cool points, you know? <laughs> so it's not hard to find a venue. You just, you just have to talk to people and say, you know, I want to have this awesome user group here. You know, you can, people usually, you know, a company will want to say, like, you know, we're hiring or, you know, just tell people that we helped you. And I think that's very reasonable. You know, you just, you say that this company sponsored us. Um, for instance, on the PDX Git website, you'll see there's a little sponsors page with all the people that have donated food or venue or, or anything. Um, so that's just, you know, it's goodwill, basically. Companies are willing to let us meet at their spaces after hours because they're not being used. And, and they get, you know, kind of a little bit of marketing, publicity, goodwill that, you know, they're giving something away to the community. So it is there. Um, people will give you free stuff. You just have to ask. Um, and there is an art to asking, so you know, there's, 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 ex there's practice there. But um, yeah, don't think that there's nothing there to be had. There's definitely venue space in your town for free. Just you might not know about it yet. Um, and then the same thing goes for food. I mean, once you can get a venue, then food is like, once you're meeting somewhere, then you could be like, do you really want like 50 nerds like with no food hanging out and you're, you know, someone will give you food once you have a venue. <laughs> Um, but there are, there are techniques, I mean, you can volunteer or, you, you know, sometimes you are part of a nonprofit uh, as an open source project, so you can just tell them that. Sometimes they don't know that what you're doing and they will give you free food if they knew that you were a nonprofit. They, they just, they don't know what, what you're doing. Um, a lot of times companies will just want to give you, you know, t-shirts and things to, things to auction off or, you know, various things like that. And, um, and then free publicity is actually really, really important. Just uh, part of that is getting the word out that your group exists. So um, people that have mailing lists that announce things locally in your town, you know, you, that's, that's the publicity that you need to get the word out. Because um, if you throw, a user, if you have a user group and no one knows about it, then, you know, it's like a, you know, tree falling in the woods doesn't, doesn't make a sound. If you have a user group and no one shows up because no one knew about it, then it's awesome that you created the user group, but sad that no one showed up. Um, this is a cool graphic. Anyone know where this graphic comes from? Bart, 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 Bart. No. <laughs> I'm trolling Bart in my talk. It's, a tractor. it's, a tractor it's an attractor. Bart is partially correct. Okay. <laughs> no, it's the, it's the Lorenz attractor. It's the Lorenz attractor. Yes, the, the original, the one good original. No. Um, Self-organizing communities. I kind of like this term. I don't know if I made it up, but I don't know. I like it. And I think open source, free software is, you know, self-organizing community. There's many, but um, I don't know if these are the three rules or atoms or axioms, but I think these are three characteristics that at least our, our self-organizing communities have, and that is chaos because there's... There's not order. I mean, people try to impose order on them, but they are chaotic. Um, they're merit, you know, meritocracies, which is people that do the most get the most. I don't know. That's my definition of, of meritocracy. Other people have different definitions. Um, and then transparency, I think, is important because if you hide everything and no one knows anything, then you're not really a community. You're just some dude doing something in the basement or something. You're... If you don't tell anyone what you're doing, or maybe you're a group of people sitting in the basement, but you know, if you're not transparent to the rest of the world what you're doing, um, it's, it's kind of losing out in the whole community aspect of, of telling people what you're doing and, and cross-pollination of ideas. So just make sure you're not working against any of these things. You know, if you're tr don't try to remove all chaos because you'll fail. Um, don't try to work against meritocracy because you'll fail. And don't try to be secretive because you'll fail, I guess is why these are, <laughs> these are up here is um, I've learned that they're there. You should just know that they're there, utilize them, you know, go with the flow. Don't try to work against them. Okay. Got some, got some lichens here because I'm liking it. Um, lichens are awesome little examples of, 
of communities. Um, there's actually like sometimes dozens of species in just one lichen, and they're bacteria and fungi and all kinds of things, and they're just doing their thing. And I think it's a really great example of of a self-organizing community. One, um, but you know, they also somehow came up with their own guidelines to to get along and live and do stuff. So I think this is important. You should define your community guidelines publicly, which means a public document, like on GitHub, people can send pull requests, all that stuff. Um, basically, it's the readme. Um, for PDX Git, we have a readme in the main repo, and it has our guidelines. It has how you contribute. It has you know all the rules that we have in our community, if you could call them rules, are, are there, defined publicly, so everyone can read them. There's no secret rules that no one knows. That, that's, I think, important. Also, I think you should modify them publicly. So that means, you know, maybe if certain people don't agree with certain changes, then you have to have a public conversation about it. And maybe there's the mailing list, or maybe there's the IRC channel, or maybe it's just meeting in person. But don't modify community guidelines in private behind closed doors, because bad things will happen. People will get really mad. People will fork the community. People will say you're doing evil things, even if you're not, because there wasn't that transparency. And um, it's good to do these things in public. Um, it, it helps the whole process. Um, and then I don't know. I don't know that I like the word enforce, but I was writing my slides quickly. And um, one thing is that you shouldn't you shouldn't take a you know a rule in your community and then. Um, not enforce it publicly. Like you, you should show people that you know the rule is in effect and it is happening. If someone does something wrong in your community, they should be you know publicly notified that they're being doing something wrong. They shouldn't be made you know fun of or harassed publicly. But I think that they should be publicly told that this is not okay. You're not following the community rules, and you know please stop or, or whatever it is. But if you don't do it publicly, if you just like privately respond to this person and say, you know, I think you're, you're not doing stuff right, the whole rest of the community doesn't see that. So they just think that there's this mean person on the mailing list and no one is dealing with it. No one is answering them. No one's telling them they're wrong. No one's telling them to get out. So that will actually, some people will leave your community because that, that mean person wasn't publicly chided or publicly told that this is not cool, you shouldn't do this. So I think it's important to enforce your guidelines publicly when you can. Um, occasionally, you want to do something in private. Like, if you think something is very sensitive, if some, you need to give someone feedback that you think is you know, very sensitive or they might not take it well in public, then, then of course, you know, contact them in private. But uh, it is important to make sure that the community knows that maybe one problem person is being dealt with. So, so definitely, you know, respond publicly to those things, not only, you know, private message or anything. Okay. Yeah. Is there some difference there when you're dealing with a problem person versus something that they've done one time? Sure. Um, yeah, I, I guess a lot of people have different philosophies, and some people just, you know, there are no problem people. There's just stuff that people do that's, that's you know people don't like sometimes, but yeah, of course you'll you'll look at a community and you'll just see like, dude, that guy creates all the problems. Like you, you could just see it. <laughs> sometimes it's me, you know, <laughs> but you can kind of tell. And yeah, a lot of communities deal with it in different ways. Some communities protect the person that is correct but mean, and other communities say you're correct but you're mean, so you're out. You know. And then there's other communities that are somewhere in the middle. And so, yeah, it's, it's I, I always lean towards, I don't care how smart or right you are. If you're mean to other people, then you're out just because that's the only way that you can run an open source kind of community in my, as I've seen it and I've done it. Yeah. Wow. Wow, Gen 2 files community level bugs against their assholes. That's probably because Dur Donnie Burkholz uh, works there and, and he has a very famous talk called um, assholes, are assholes Are Killing Your Community. So awesome. Yes, Gen 2 is extremely evolved in their community technology. That's, that's cool. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, that's cool. I have to I have to pat Donnie on the back for that one. He pro he's probably behind that. <laughs> cool. That's awesome. Awesome. Thanks for that. That's that's so germane to this topic. Thank you. Awesome. Um, just a little bit about the future of PDX Skit. Um, I don't want to be the single soul, you know, root commit leader of PDX Skit. I just knew that I had to start it and get it going. And but I want to have some type of rotating leadership. Um, we're trying this out with the Portland Pearl Mongers as well. Um, some of the Portland Pearl Mongers, uh, people that have led the group, just been doing it for years and they've got kids and companies and jobs and you know, it's, it's just too much to ask someone to do something indefinitely. So we wanna play with the idea of a rotating leadership which means maybe you, know, you have a person and they're the leader of the group for three months and then they hand it off to someone else and they're the leader of the group for three months and then they hand it off to someone else. So you've, you, know, you don't have one person indefinitely doing something. Um, the other idea we have is to just have like all, at all times three people kind of defined as maybe the leader and then they, you know, one month is one leader next month so that you're not having to plan everything every month. It just, it is, it gets to be too much and it burns people out. So trying to prevent that by kind of very preemptively just making the group just have lots of leaders. I, I don't want to be a bottleneck in, in anything, the community, the technology. So trying to prevent that. Um, we need t-shirts and stickers because how can we already be this far along and, and not have t-shirts and stickers? Um, and then I think some focused hackathons would be cool. Just um, there's a lot of hackathons in Portland. I helped start a few that started the rest, I think, I guess. I don't know. But they're all very social and that was the point of them to just hang out, drink beer, hack on stuff. Um, and now I think Portland has so many social, non-focused hackathons that we're actually like, PDX Git's gonna be like, we're gonna have a hackathon about Git, like only Git. So um, we'll, we might have some certain, you know, like let's hack on this very specific topic and whoever comes, let's just, you know, work on this one thing. And so that's one of, some ideas I have for the, the future of PDX Git. Um, where am I on time? You 20 minutes, good Lord, I speak fast, okay. Cool, well here's everything you need to know on one slide because I thought that was a good idea. All right. Um, does anyone want to like start going through this right now, like on the computer, and tell you know I can, if you want to create a GitHub org, you know, basically like literally the whole. If you want to fork all of PDX Git, um, you should create a GitHub organization for your town. You know, maybe it's Salem or Eugene or something. Okay, so create a GitHub org. Okay, and then if you go to our GitHub repo, which is GitHub.com/pdxgit slash pdxgit.github.com. It's very long, but that's what it is. Um, if you go to that URL, you'll get a fork button if you are logged in to, to GitHub. And if you've already created this org, then you'll have the option to fork it into that org. And that's what you'll want to do. Okay? Um, at that point, it's still going to be named this, so you're, you're still going to have to rename this repo later, just as a, just a heads up. And yes, okay, I created these things before GitHub changed their naming rules. So I'm grandfathered in and I, I still have pdxgit.github.com. But all new, all new GitHub pages things that you create, they, they, have, a different, uh, they have a different URL that's .io. So your real repo will be named like, you know, PDX Eugene or something like that, .github.io. That'll be the name of the repo on GitHub. And the naming is really important because that tells GitHub the, the basically the, the domain name that it's listening to and all that stuff. Now, registering a domain is optional. I registered pdxgit.com just because I'm addicted to domain names and I have like a billion and just why not, right? But you don't need it. You can just use, you know, whatever.github.io. You don't need to pay any money to, to any domain name registrar. So it's just, it's optional. Um, if you do ha get your own custom domain, there is a CNAME file in the, in the repo, and you put your domain in that CNAME file. And that's basically what tells GitHub how to listen on the right domains and stuff like that. Um, I'm not going to go into it, but there's a little 
little uh, configuration of your DNS so that it points to GitHub. So basically, um, pdxgit.com, the DNS actually points directly to GitHub, and that's how GitHub serves pdxgit.com is because DNS tells everyone to just go directly there. Um, you're going to want to create a Google group because, you know, it's just decent infrastructure for communicating. Um, optional, let's say Twitter and LinkedIn. I mean, I think LinkedIn is becoming more important. It was way less important in the past, but I think it's, um, LinkedIn is actually one of the more useful social networks these days. So I think in terms of a user group and for professional contacts and people trying to get jobs and improve their career, um, I think it is good to create a LinkedIn group for your, for your group. Um, I left out all kinds of other steps, and then I added profit at the bottom, because that's what everyone does. <laughs> um, there's, you know, there's a bunch of optional things in there, but these are, this is like most of the infrastructure right here. If you can just create the org and fork this, um, you know, there's a lot of little things in there I can help you with. There, there's documentation, but you can just basically steal all the stuff that I've done for PDX Git, and you've, you've got like 90% of a user group ready to go. You just need to find the people and the venue um, and, and create a few accounts. But um, it, it, it's not that hard. And you don't really need to spend any money. If you have no money, just don't register the domain. And then it, everything else here is free. And then as long as you can find a venue that, you know, to get donated, you, you can, can run this completely free. Um, if you have a few dollars, then you can you know, get your own custom domain and, and things like that. But it's, it's extremely low cost, if not, if not free. Um, is there anything on this that I went over too fast, maybe, or wants, anybody wants more details? Yes, 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 yes. Well, um, people will hire you because you know about Git. I've been learning this. So... Um, I do consulting with Git. People ask me Git questions. I mean, I give lots of free help about Git. But then companies come to you and they say, I've been creating this mountain of problems for five years. Can you help me? And then you say, how big is your checkbook? <laughs> so that's kind of more on the profit part. I don't know. Is the learning, the career development, the connections, becoming a better developer, being able to use version control more efficiently. So I think the profit is, uh, is very distributed and diverse, and there's a huge amount of potential for profit. People don't even know how Git is changing the world right now. Most people outside of the software development world have never heard of it, and they don't know that it's this new technology that's kind of going in every direction, and all kinds of fields are standardizing on it. And yeah, so... Lots of people are learning about GitHub like today. Like today they learned that there's this thing called GitHub. So they need a lot of help getting up to speed. So if you know about it, then all of a sudden you have a, a very marketable skill. So that's the profit. Yes, good question. I like it. It's probably a troll question, but I had a good answer. <laughs> um, how do I get more involved with PDX Get Together? So we've got a Twitter account, we've got the website you know about, we're on GitHub, we're on Google Groups, and we've got a meeting coming up on the 26th, so that's some stuff. Get in touch. Um, okay, I have to tell everyone this because I, I usually call this slide stalk me, okay? My wife said that's probably an inappropriate, not good thing to use the word stalking, um, so I changed it to git merge hyphen s equals social. Are you seeing this? Are you seeing this part? did that for you. <laughs> so here's how you can merge your, your social contacts with, with mine. Um, Duke Lido on Twitter, duke.lido.net, duke.lido.net, and then some other stuff. But I try to make it easy for people to get a hold of me. But I'm on IRC, LinkedIn, email, whatever. Um, get a hold of me. Let me know. I can help you start your group if you need. Um, and thank you. Mahalo and... That's a very pixelated blob eating some trees. Awesome. Um, this, this was not a clone of another user group, but I guess it's a clone of the yearly uh, Git
core Git developer conference was once, is, I guess it still happens once per year. It used to happen once per year at Google in Mountain View, and I th uh, they just moved it to Berlin this year for the first year, but I think they're going to they're going to have like a European one and an American one. Now they're going to like split it apart. So they haven't had the, the American version of the yearly conference yet. But um, no, it's, so actually this group was just kind of a, I think there should be a, a user group instead of just a yearly conference. And um, the yearly conference is very hard to get to. You know, there was a bunch of Europeans flying to Mountain View. There's, you know, they are all hating it because they had to go through TSA. And <laughs> so it's like, wow, every town should just have, you know, a Git user meeting, you know, it's Git, Git's being used everywhere. I don't know. I might be the first in the U.S. I'm, I, I, I guess I should say I'm the first because then someone will tell me I'm wrong. But um, yeah, I'm the first that I know of, first Git user group in the world, I guess, that I know of. But uh, I hope someone's forked to me, so, you know, in this meeting, in this talk. But no, I, I don't know of any others either. So, yep, just this, just us. Portland, we're weird, we're crazy. We do lots of stuff. Um, hopefully, there'll be like 100 Git user groups next year, you know, all around the US or something. But um, Git's really taking off. There's no reason why there shouldn't be. I mean, it's being used in every industry and in every language. So it's uh, fascinating to me that we don't already have more user, more Git user groups. So. Yeah. Oh, maybe it's the user interface for Git. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I guess I can touch on that in a second, is that one of the important things that, that is important for me with PDX Git is that it's totally newbie friendly. Anyone can walk in the door. I mean, there's people that are like, I've never heard of Git. Like, I heard it's this interesting thing, you know? And it's like, awesome. Come walk in and hang out and bullshit. So it's not like, oh, you don't know what friggin' rev parse means and walk out the door. Like, it's not elitist. It's not anything like that. It's very inclusive. That's... That's what open source and community means to me. So, you know, be inclusive. Yes, you, you have to make sure that people will even come because, you know, they, you don't want them to be so afraid to even show up. You know, you want to tell them anyone's welcome. You, you got to make sure you, you get that out. Jerry. Star team. Good lord. Wow, Bart agreed with you. Just, just that's golden. It's the conceptual piece of switching from this monolithic source tree. Yeah, it's a whole change of world. To fork, to branch, and not having that free branching to something that's distributed and more free and more open and being able to. Grab Jason's code, grab uh, Duplato's code, and and being able to have more of this freedom, and that's that's really the part that needs to be evangelized. Yeah, more. yeah. Well, it needs to be evangelized more. The hard part with that is that Git does support a variety of workflows. You know, yeah. even distributed CMS does. Even Git is actually does. not a version control system; it's a system to build version control yeah, systems. Exactly. It's and that's that's for experienced developers, right? It's that's the hard part. sad but true. But experienced yeah. <laughs> Whereas the people who are trying to figure out why the hell I have to say dang day all the time and get to get to the obvious thing, uh, those are the people that you scare off if you're not really yeah. careful about it. Um, and yeah, <laughs> Git is hard to learn, and it's better with help, it's better with friends, it's better with beers. So just if you're getting frustrated, start a user group or, or you know, find me, I'll help you. And yeah, we got more questions now. What's up? Of this year? Of this year, and on March 31st, the Git Meetup Berlin group was founded. Dang, okay, it's spreading over this overseas. I know, first North America. And we, and I'm January 2012, people, so yeah, this, we're old school. <laughs> Thank you for that research, that's awesome. So there's two, there's now two user groups. Um, and I know why it's in Berlin, because they just had the yearly developer conference in Berlin. So the, the conference started that user group. And then that's interesting to hear that Paris has one now as well. Awesome. So 
Very cool. Portland is still the epicenter of Git user group dumb in, in the United States. So, uh, did you have a question, sir? You sure? Just a. Oh. Oh, beer was not on the list. Yes, yes. Um, I guess I concluded it with the food, but yeah, hopefully uh, companies give you free beer as well, because it's always better to meet with free beer. Yeah. And did you have a comment? Cool. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. I mean, there, and there are some people at the at Open Source Bridge, some of my friends actually do workshops and teach Git and do things like that. So yeah, there's people doing that, but there's still more room. There's lots to learn. So yeah, yeah. And if, yeah, if you get, in to get a hold of me, you know, I can put you in touch with some good people or yeah, awesome. Cool. Well, I think I'm going to end it on there. Hopefully some people learn some stuff and Take this knowledge and go to your town and do good things is all I ask. So, Dude, question. Coffee. coffee. Oh man. Okay. Sure. I can do. I can plug myself. Sweet. Um, I also have a coffee company, and I'm going to be doing a little coffee tasting unconference session Friday morning. So I don't know if it has a specific time, but it's kind of when I get here Friday morning. So I'm guessing around 10-ish will be some type of coffee tasting. Um, but also education. Um, I've had to learn a lot about coffee, owning a coffee company. So yeah, I just want to spread the knowledge, teach people what the good stuff looks like, you know, what the bad stuff looks like, and um, just nerd out about good coffee, drink it. You know, there's some people in the room that roast some coffee. They're probably be, you know telling me I'm wrong about some stuff. But you know. <laughs> okay, uh, everyone. <laughs> Have a great conference, everyone, and thank you very much.